Hello everyone, my name is John Hammond and welcome back to another Try Hack Me video. Today I'm going to be showcasing the Lazy Admin Room. It is a free room, so you do not need to be subscribed to access it. Uh, I'm joining the room here and I've spun up a machine. Uh, the prompts here are what is the user flag and what is the root flag. So it's not a guided sort of hand-holding procedure that Try Hack Me does in some of its other walkthrough rooms. This is more of a challenge-oriented room. So I've gotten started, created a directory for ourselves, I'm connected to the VPN, I've also gone ahead and made a simple Simple readme where I've got my IP address set up as a variable that I can reuse um, and the task and stuff so we can take take our notes and I've also gone ahead and started the nmap scan with nmap tac sc tac sv tac on nmap initial so it looks like we have ssh open on port 22 uh, we also have port 80 open so it seems to be hosting a web server so what we can do is we can go ahead and go access that server I will grab that IP address one last time go fire it up in a web browser if Google Chrome will let me go to that address bar. And we're greeted with just the simple Apache 2 default page. So it doesn't seem to be anything here. We could scroll through the source, but nothing particular jumps out at me. So we'll start our regular enumeration techniques. I'm going to go ahead and end map uh, HTTP colon slash slash our IP address. I think it needs tack H. I don't know why I'm floating on that idea. Looks like it does. So let's go ahead and tee that out to neekto.log. I'll also get started with some GoBuster so we can go ahead and enumerate Okay, what does this web page actually have for us? So we need our URL. Uh, let me grab that IP address, just nice, quick, and easy. Great, now let's go Buster Tech, you HTTP, that IP address. We'll go ahead and use a word list, and I'm going to be using the directory list that Durbuster typically ships with. So, okay, that immediately found a slash content, and we can go view that. Oh, misspelled content there. And it says, welcome to Sweet Rice. Thank you for your install of Sweet Rice as your website management system. The site is building now. Please come late, Roger. If you are the webmaster, go to dashboard general website settings and uncheck the box site close open your website. Looks like this will link us to uh, the documentation or some things to do when Sweet Rice is installed. Sounds like Sweet Rice is a content management system or CMS. So I'm going to view the source here. It's kind of messy. Uh, I want to get an idea on what version number that the Sweet right page is. Looks like there's some JavaScript, dashboard course, and 0.54. Not sure if that's the current version of the Sweet Rice package. Nothing else seemingly in there. Any other links? No, no. Okay, so no real version number as to what this Sweet Rights installation actually is. Um, no other pages that GoBuster found. Anyway, let's go ahead and do our research on Sweet Rice. I'll go ahead and start up a search exploit so I can look for Sweet Rice. Okay, looks like there are a couple options here. Remote file inclusion, multiple vulnerabilities. Looks like those are just text files. So they might be explaining what the process actually is arbitrary file download and arbitrary file upload. Again, not sure the version number 0 0.53, um, 0 0.54, which we saw in the JavaScript might tell us that, okay, we know that's at least a potentially real version number, not just something arbitrary we saw in the JavaScript. Cross-site request forgery, cross-site request forgery in PHP code execution. That does sound peculiar. Okay, let's take a look at what that is. Search bullet tag X on that path. Um, looks like what we will do, reading through this, in the Sweet Rice CMS panel, adding an add section will allow an admin to add PHP code. It can take advantage of the CSRF vulnerability or cross-site request forgery and allow the attacker to execute PHP code on the server. In this exploit, I just added an echo hacked PHP info and you can customize this for yourself. Okay, so it gives us some HTML code and allows us to go ahead and inject it. Um, we might need to modify where this is actually showcasing it though. Localhost is obviously not going to be our target. We need to change it to the IP address and sweet rice might need to be changed to content. We can certainly try that. Let's let's go ahead and copy this and work with it. I will kind of check in our other scans. Seemingly nothing. Let's go ahead and move into exploit and then search exploit tack M. So we can copy that and let's move that over to our own like exploit.html or something. Let's go ahead and check out what we can do with this. 
Um, we don't need all these comments here, but we should go ahead and change this specific IP address. So that should be what we're looking at. Oh, and content as well. So let's actually just completely change that. AS type equals add, hidden moved adds hack. And then it would put it in what location? Where would it put this? Okay. After HTML executed, you can access the page on that location. Ink adds hacked. Let's tinker with it. Um, because it has the correct URL in there now, we should just be able to open up this HTML document and add it in to our specific page. Why does the text area HTML just muffed with echo hacked and showcase PHP info? Let's see if that will actually work for us. Just tinkering, just exploring. Let's Firefox over to exploit. And, oh boy. Okay, did it already do it? Do I need authentication? Do I need to access it? Admin, admin, login failed. That did not seem to work. Maybe it automatically ran it because it said on load document exploit submit. So exploit, yeah, is the name of this. So go. it went ahead and submitted it. And I don't know if it's actually going to be accessible or not without having actually, no. Without having any credentials, it didn't seem to work for us. Okay, so what could we do? If we have arbitrary file read and some of those other search blade options, let's check this out one last time. Remote file inclusion, multiple vulnerabilities, arbitrary file download, backup disclosure. Maybe that has some potential credentials in some of the backups. So let's try that. Search exploit, tag X. Proof of concept, you can access all MySQL backup and include and download them from this directory, localhost inc MySQL backup. Is that a thing? Oh, we saw earlier inc actually just can't, comes off of the content page in our case, because it's not sweet rice on this site, it's content. So let's go ahead and try that. Inc MySQL backup. Is that a directory? Oh no, it needs the it needs the ink, right? Back to that. It needs ink to include, right? There we go. Ooh, MySQL backup. Let's try and copy this link address. Um, let's move back and make a directory for backups, 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 and let's w get this. See what we have here. SQL file. It is a PHP script. Weird? Oh boy, okay. Attachment as a table. Category as a table. I don't care about those, I want users. Do we have some users? Oh, going down. What is that? Global settings, looks like a serialized object here. Author, title, keywords, that's a long string. Oh, admin user is manager and his password. Is, password is this, that looks like a hash. That looks like, so I'm seeing, how many characters is that? 32, so 32 hexadecimal characters may very well be a hash. Let's go over to CrackStation and try to see if we can crack that hash. So I'll just slap that in here. Yep, not a robot. Password one, two, three, classic, super cool. Okay, so now with that, we might be able to go ahead and use that upload vulnerability. So manager was his username and password123 was his account. What is the user flag? What is the root flag? Those are just the tasks that we need to finish. Let's go back to access our exploit. Firefox exploit. That's gonna go ahead and submit it, but we need to log in. So it's manager and password one, two, three. Fired off, that succeeded. Did that work? Um, I don't know. Let's go find out. It put it in content and where did that exploit say it would put it in? Ads hacked.php. Let's try that. Ink ads that hacked that PHP. No, uh, let's try and run that again now that we have that session created within our browser. Uh, and I killed Firefox when I did that, so that was lame. Um, let's go ahead and do that exploit one more time. Log in. Okay, now that I've backgrounded Firefox, I should be able to Firefox exploit one more time. 
They go ahead and submitted it, and now I've created that page. Okay, awesome. Now let's go see if we can go ahead and access it. Just for our simple proof of concept, right? We want to do see if it would load that PHP info page. And it does. Okay, awesome. So we could potentially leverage this to remote code execution. Um, let's go ahead and copy our PHP reverse shell over in here. So let's just call it like rev shell.php. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to modify that to include my IP address as the attacker, which is 108038 currently. So that should be the correct IP address. And let's listen on port quad nine. And now let's include all of this inside of that exploit rather than running their little PHP info proof of concept. Let's include this whole thing. Okay, so now we have that whole reverse shell in there. Um, let's change this to rev shell. And that's all that it needs seemingly. So it's not, not longer going to be put in the hacked page, but the rev shell.php page. Let's go ahead and try that. We still have Firefox open and running, so I can go ahead and use that Firefox exploit one more time. And that has submitted and created revshell.php. Okay, great. So now let's start up our listener. Oh, that port is already in use. Why is that port already in use? What? Am I doing something else? What are you doing? How does uh, SS show me processes? Is it supposed to? Pseudo p kill net cat. Maybe I already have something up when I was just testing things. Arc is already in use. Well, dang it. I already made that as a prompt. I don't have netstat installed. And I don't know the syntax for SS off the top of my head. Let's go learn it. Let's go figure it out. SS C process name. Maybe it is tech E. T L N P. Probably the same syntax. T L N P. Oh, P P to show processes, right? Crap nine nine nine. E. What is that? That's totally not what I'm referring to. That's totally not what I need. All right, let's just friggin' change the port. Quad eight. <laughs> Who cares? So now we can go use that and let's change it to just shell rather than rev shell because I'm apparently just making mistakes in this video. Great. Now let's Firefox our exploit. And because he's logged in, still has that session, now we have a shell. Great. Can I please listen on quad eight? Please, pretty please? Okay, awesome. That's good. So now that that's created, let's go over to our ads and go to shell.php and that will execute and give me a shell over here. Okay, awesome. So uh, I wanted to use this video as kind of a vessel to showcase some of the PTY upgrade elevation techniques. So you've probably seen me before use Python taxi, um, import PTY, PTY.spawn bin bash, et cetera, et cetera. I found this resource NetSec and I wanted to showcase it to you because it has kind of needs some, some neat tricks, not just doing this within Python, but also doing it with other commands. So Perl, some syntax here to execute bin sh, same thing in Ruby and Lua. Uh, you can also do this, okay, if you're in Vim or VI and Nmap, those will be able to break out and get you a shell. The PTY is super duper helpful. One cool trick that I learned just recently is actually using the script command. So, uh, does that not like that? I guess he's just still spawning sessions. Okay, user bin script should allow me to use QC and start bin bash and save all that output to dev null. So now you can see dub 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 data, THM shell, I've spawned a PTY without using Python. So in the cases that you don't have Python available, or you don't know if it's using Python 2 or Python 3, this user bin script, tag QC, spawning bin bash and writing out to dev null will give you that. This technique does still let you use that foreground or, or background the netcat connection and then run your SCT raw minus echo. So you can foreground the session again and 
then gain your auto completion, Tabata auto complete, and command history, and left and right arrow keys. So that is very, very nice as well. And again, you're not using Python, so that's a good help. Okay, now that we're here, we could go ahead and look around the file system or start to do some enumeration because we have our initial access. So let's go ahead and try and upload linpeas. Again, I'm gonna use my poor man's pen test framework so I can just simply upload that guy nice and easy. Good, good. I'm already in that directory. Let's make linpeas executable and let him run. A lot of stuff rolling through. Oh boy, okay, sudo entry. I should have just ran sudo attack L just to see. User data may run the following commands here. No password to run Perl with a specific script. Okay, peculiar. Uh, can I see what that script does? Home, that was in IT guy. Can I see his files? I can. Oh, there's a user.txt file. Can I read that? Yes, nice, nice. So that's going to be the first flag that we need. Go ahead and keep note of that and submit it on the page. There we go. And let's see this backup.perl file. So catting that out. It's running Perl. Can I write to that? Can I write to Perl? No, I cannot. But it seems to run sh on etc. copy.sh. Okay. Uh, what is that guy? Whoa. Someone else. Someone else. Was someone else here already? <laughs> What is it? Why is it creating a reverse shell? <laughs> can I write to that? I can write to that. And it's running as root, owned by root. So maybe it's running as root. Oh, I mean, I'm going to run it as root when I use sudo. So let's go ahead and modify this. Nano, etc. Copy dot sh. And let's nerf that guy's uh, reverse shell and let's put ours in. Pentas monkey reverse shell cheat sheet. Let's slap in the syntax for simple netcat. I mean, I guess we kind of had it already from this guy, so we didn't need to do that, but hey. I am my attacker 10.838, and let's put it on port 777. Cool. Okay, so now let's get another shell ready and waiting for me. Attack LNVP, can't see because of my microphone. I shouldn't be looking at the keyboard anyway. So, catting that file out, now we have our reverse shell in place. And if I run it as root, thanks to our sudo attack L, we should be able to go ahead and sudo user bin Perl, call a Perl script, which in turn calls a bash script, whack enter, and now I have that shell here. Uh, I'll go ahead and stabilize Python taxi. Do I have Python 2 or just regular Python my prompt? I do. Okay. So, let's stabilize that shell quick and easy for us. We could do the same thing with that uh, script technique that I just showed, but now that we are in root, let's go ahead and grab that root.txt file. Okay, all done, nice and easy. That was kind of cool. I hope you, uh, you like those techniques. Um, abusing the sweet rice CMS, uh, finding out some of those credentials because of their backups that we were able to look through and then using that PHP code execution to add an advertisement into the page. So very, very cool and search exploit totally uh, really, really sped up our research for us because we were able to go ahead and find that vulnerability and it's already well known. So that's that. Um, I also wanted to kind of use this video to showcase those spawning a PTY or TTY techniques um, because I was able to open Nano with that setup that I had. I was able to potentially run SU if I needed to. Uh, I know if you're just a regular kind of reverse shell without stabilizing anything, then it's going to ask you, hey, you need to be in a full PTY. You can do that just as easily with these commands that you see me run often. Uh, that new trick that I learned, the bin script, uh, user bin script, tack QC, bin bash dev null, and uh, exporting the terminal variable and using STTY raw minus echo to get your foreground. Lots and lots of good stuff. So, okay, that's all that I wanted to cover. A good, quick and easy Linux room to showcase some of that stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did like this video, please do do the YouTube algorithm things. Press that like button, comment, uh, subscribe. Hit the bell. That's so weird to me. Hit a bell. <laughs> a real a real life bell that you're just like whacking repeatedly 
whatever. <laughs> Thank you guys. I hope to see you on the Patreon. If you were willing to support PayPal donations, I'm so, so grateful. Love to see you guys on the Discord server. Link in the description. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, all the others. Thanks for watching. With the